Well, thank you guys for, for coming. Um, Taiki, why are you walking through this? <laughs> we are live. Damn we are live in studio. <laughs> I'd like to start it off and just hear like the origins of Bull Durham because like, like how did it come to be? Because I think it's widely regarded as probably the best, most accurate baseball movie that's that's out there. So well, and before Robo Umps, I kept chasing low, low and away sliders, <laughs> and I thought I need another way to make a living. So uh, um, you know, I played several years pro ball every year, every place that mattered except where you guys play. I finished in AAA and started in the Appalachian League. So I've, I've hit all the stops and you've hit some of them. Yep. And, um, I, and I went to movies every day I, just to get out of the cheap hotels. And I fell in love with movies and years later I, I tried to write them and discovered I actually could. And I hated sports movies because they always ended with a home run in the bottom of the ninth. And, that, and I, I, I mean, my thousands of games, that happened about twice. Yeah, that's right. Usually it was a broken bat, ground ball to third, and somebody mm -hmm. got, you know, or a pop up to second. That's how they end. And so I said, well, I'm going to write a movie that I like, and maybe it'll never get made, and nobody will, maybe nobody will like it, but at least I'll write a sports movie that I like. And then I found this guy, Kevin Costner, who was actually a good ball player. And he was about to break, and uh, we got very lucky. And then... I, uh, people like the damn movie, and uh, <laughs> people like the movie a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I thought, I'm good. I'll get hired to play another season, and that's how it goes. Yeah. Awesome. How did the name Bull Durham come about? Well, I didn't. I I drove around the minor leagues um, for two or three weeks on my own to, to see if the minors had changed since I was there, and the minors hadn't changed. It yeah. was still guys they, sending they still notes to changed. girls, yeah. <laughs> and the conditions weren't great. They're, they've been improving, and guys were hustling girls, and there were notes going back and forth, and nobody could, you know, your meal money, <laughs> you're, you're losing your meal money in the, you know, clubs and things. And uh, um, so I, I, I thought, great, this is a world that people identify with, because everybody's dream is alive. Probably you're not going to make it, and you're going to have to go home and find a real job. You know what, Crash Davis loves something more than it loves him back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It happens to be a game, and he's really good at it. He's just not in the right place at the right time. And everybody loves something, a job, a woman, a man, something more than it loves him back. And that's, I think, why the movie's hung around. And I think that's one of the things that makes the movie that good, is that it's so real. So that everyone that actually plays the game is like, nope, that's, like, if you want to watch a movie, what the minor leagues is about, that's it. Yep. The I'm difference sure. now is cell phones. Yeah. It's about, that, that's, that's legitimately that's about, about the yeah, only difference. That's about it. They're still making the same amount of money, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <really good>. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, yeah. the, the stories that come up out of that, right? I mean, just, like, the, just the, little, the little details about it, you know, wearing the garters and, like, breathing through your eyelids, right? Or, like, going over to Annie's house or just, like, the little things like that that go on that, like, you would never think that actually happened that happen all the time. Like, I'm sure you have to have, like, there's so you gotta much. have so many good there's stories. There's so many stories that to us they're normal. Mm. You know, there's mm. stories like you watch it in a movie, you're like, oh, that's so funny. But like to us, it was like every day. It's like the meal made a Waffle House every time on the road. I'm like, oh my god, we had to be next to Waffle House <laughs> every single time. Mm. Who has the meal money? And then the funny joke, I made a joke. I'm like, hey, when you guys messed up, the new guys, the new bargaining game, it's like, when you guys give up on the meal money, he gave up on team chemistry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Drinking money. <laughs> That's right. You, you can borrow your cash you in your to pocket. Know each other. Yeah. 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 On a 10-day so. road trip, by day three, you're borrowing from the clubhouse board. Oh, yeah. You're out the first day. And maybe the bus driver. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So I remember live, like, I, I slept at the foot of a guy's bed. I got called up from the Appy League from the Appalachian League with the Elizabethan Twins to Beloit Snappers. And there was another Australian guy. The Beloit I, Snappers. Yeah. I, I missed that one, but. No, yeah, <laughs> he didn't miss much. <laughs> but I, I went up there and I legitimately got one comfort on the ground, wrapped myself in another comfort and slept at the foot of a guy's bed. Yeah. Like a dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he had the bed and he was like six foot three and 150 soaking wet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I got, I got called up in, uh, 
my first year of pro ball, I got called up from A ball to double A, but it was the last month of the season. And so there's no time to find an apartment or anything like that. I mean, I was fortunate enough to sign for a good amount of money, so I could have found an apartment, but it just didn't make any sense. No one does month to month leases. So I asked some teammates if I could stay with them. They're like, yeah, we got a place, we got room for you. I'm like, oh, great. I'm not knowing any better, you know? And so I show up to like move my stuff in, and they got like seven dudes living in a three bedroom apartment, <laughs> right? And then, so I'm like, okay, this is fine. I see where I'm living, whatever. And so I end up on an air mattress on the floor in the kitchen with a sheet, like a half, a half sheet going from like the counter <coughs> across, not even a full sheet. So I could, I had privacy if I was like halfway down, you know, if I was laying down or like kneeling, but if I stood all the way up, no <laughs> privacy. And there's, you know, dudes in the living room on air mattresses and just like blankets on the ground. And it's like, oh. And guys like, were inviting their girlfriends over to this. Oh, room. that's, yeah. that's, no, that's, yeah, that's yeah, no yeah. problem at all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> come over. Like, we're yeah, you try to like rotate out like, oh, well, my girlfriend's coming over tonight. Like, I got a girl coming. Uh, girlfriend Should I have has to close a curtain between yep. her? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't. Can do. I have the kitchen? My girlfriend's coming over. Yeah, the walls are super thin, so you hear everything. Mm. Are you having an experience in my legs until you slept in the kitchen? <laughs> yeah, my first roommate were two guys from Venezuela, two Dominicans, and two Mexicans. And I'm a Canadian that doesn't speak English. <laughs> That's fun. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't speak. I don't speak anything but French Canadian. Not French. French Canadian. That's so. What was that like? What was that like coming over, and not speaking the language at all? Because I'm always super fascinated. Um, you know, like we have Shogo Akiyama this year with the Reds, and it's like speaks actually. A decent amount of English, like I was surprised with how much he, he already knows, but clearly, you know, there's the language barrier there. And, like, the, you know, it, in the movie, too, there's, you know, you have your Latin guys and they have their rituals and they, it's the cultural, like, melting pot of it all. But, like, it's, it's fascinating to me how, long, how guys make it work. Like, how do you go figure about, it out. you just figure it out? Yeah, and, I mean, the common language is baseball. The, yeah. the, the guys I felt really badly for were the Latin players because, I mean, a lot of places, they have no place to eat. You know, a guy get released, or a guy get sent down, or sent home, and they were like a tight family. These I mean, kids are 16, 17 years yeah, old sometimes. Yeah. Like, that's why it's hard. It's I, I've always been really close to the Latin players because I didn't, you know, I I know how hard it is to understand and to, you know, you think they're laughing. They're are they laughing at me or they're laughing? Yeah, like, it's weird. Oh, yeah. It's and and if you have a little insecurity, that's the thing. I, I think for me the biggest trick to bring them in is to just like understand their, how, what kind of person they are. If they don't talk, they're shy, so they're not gonna talk. And then just try to learn one or two words. It's stupid like that. What else in the movie was like real life experience that? Unfortunately not uh, the Susan Sarandon character. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite character. I know. <laughs> really? <laughs> I would have still be in the minor league. <laughs> well, I, I, here, here's a little, minor one, but we were in the Texas League, which was double A, and we were in Little Rock on a long road trip. And because I was a middle infielder, I played every inning and every game, and there was almost no uh, days off. And it was uh, Cormier Hotel, and we're playing cards, and it's two or three in the morning, and it's pouring rain. And nobody really wanted to play cards. We just couldn't sleep, and there's no place to go in Little Rock. Mm -hmm. And it's pouring rain. And we start dreaming, what would it be like to get a rain out. We, tomorrow we can all have a rest, we have, you know, it's just great. You can take that, that was great, but we're talking. And uh, <laughs> <clears throat> so we said, what if we go out to the ballpark, this is old ballpark, double A ballpark in Little Rock, and we pull the tarp off the field. This is like Laurel and Hardy, right? <laughs> so we get a cab at two in the morning and go out to the ballpark. The ballpark's in a really rough part of town. And so we tell the cabbie, and we pull all our like five dollars a day mail money. Yeah, <laughs> wait for us. We climb over the fence. Our ace reliever, who was a real prospect, cuts his hand. He's out for the season. Oh. On the top of the thing, Terry Wilshusen. If you're watching Terry, <laughs> and, we, and we get in there, it's pouring rain. We go like, wait a minute. There's a reason it takes sixty guys to roll the tarp off the oh. field. <laughs> the thing weighs 100 tons, and yeah. it's raining. So we climb back over the hill, so we go back. It, the, the guy's long gone. We have to walk four miles through in the, the horrible yeah. neighborhoods in the rain. Uh, and we play the next day and get hammered. But <laughs> the, idea, the idea, yeah, it was the worst. It didn't work out. <laughs> now we get to Amarillo, <clears throat> showing how smart we were. This is later in the season. Now, Amarillo 
is, is one of the worst towns to hang out in. Maybe a lovely town to live in, folks, but it's not a good town to visit. The ballpark is by the uh, slaughterhouse, is behind the left field fence, and the, and the, and the wind blows in. Oh, God. Sounds right? like the Cal League. Yeah. So we, we go out, and we flood the field. And we get a night off in Emerald. So at the end of the season, okay, and we have a double hitter to end the season in Amarillo, and we're fighting out for fourth place. I mean, you know, it's like the season went sideways. And it's the night before the Sunday double hitter, which is a big promotion. And the game before, Chris Spire, who played many years in the big leagues, yeah. he's their shortstop. And I'm the second baseman, and we're both, I think, Southern California guys, and I'm at second base and uh, on offense, and he comes over and he goes, hey, we know you guys are the ones that did the two rainouts that flooded the field. And I said, how do you know? He says, it was in the sporting news. No way. And I said, hey, I made the sporting news. <laughs> so, he said, we, we don't want to play this damn double hitter tomorrow. What? We're fighting for fourth place. We'll join you <laughs> tonight. So about midnight, both teams showed up. And the guy... <laughs> So now, now you got your 100 people, the yeah. are. And by the way, they had a little, you know, they had a little ganja there, and, and they had some beer. And the owner was so afraid of this happening that he had these guard dogs on chains all over the place. Oh, jeez. <laughs> but the Amarillo Giants, which had Dave Kingman, and, and uh, mm. it had uh, uh, Jim Barr, who won 20 games for the, for the, for the Giants in a couple of years, for the San Francisco Giants. And... It was, it was like 20, it was like 40 guys sitting up on the scoreboard thing, and we flooded the field. <laughs> we get the ballpark the next day, and the owner says, I don't care who did it, we're playing two anyway. They, they brought in, uh, they, they straw all over the field and sawdust, and they set fire to it. I have pictures of this. It looks like apocalypse now. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's an air base that brings in the helicopters to dry, to dry it out. So we got fire and helicopters. <laughs> Jeez. I'm waiting oh, yeah. for the ride of the Valkyries to be playing. And you can't lose that ten thousand dollar gate. We, <laughs> <laughs> no, we've had to do no, it. No, no. We, had to we do played it in two. Independent league. <laughs> we played two in the mud. Mm -hmm. I remember yeah. just dropping these bunts down because they go plop and. You, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I drove all the way back to L.A. in my car. Yeah. So gotta get the gate. And <laughs> guess what? Oh, that finally goes. That that oh, showed up in Boulder. Yeah, because that, that's oh. the scene, right? Where they, I can get us a rain out yeah. kind of thing. They I get your rain out. <laughs> There's awesome. so many like little stars that we don't think is that big of a deal, but there are. Oh, I mean, there's a lot. Guys just borrowing bats. Guys borrowing batting gloves. Guys not having shoes. Guys. I played with Adrian Beltre. He's 15 years old. Illegally signed. Yeah. That's okay. I want to hear about that story. Georgia. He's got to be the only <laughs> the Latin player to lie about no. his age in reverse. The other way, yeah. Yeah. That was unbelievable. I'm like, what a spectacular wow. player. I played with him oh 15 years old. He was my ter third baseman, and he looked identical. I, I think he's the best third baseman of all time. Yeah. He just played on the West Coast. I think he would have played with the Yankees. Or like, he yeah. knew I was, Boston, it would have been I was, I was fortunate because like, I grew up in L.A. I was a big Dodger fan, so I was there when Beltre came up. And he was just slick, like, slick. Like, you know. Yeah. Ridiculous. Um, right. And so then I watched him go to Seattle and to Texas and then, you know, bounce all over. And I was like... You know, and then that was, those were the years when you were there too, right? Like, what was that like? Because like, I, I had it's I had real. a shirt I had with your face no on way it you did. with the with the the goatee on it. <laughs> I swear. My dad was wearing that. <laughs> <laughs> my dad was wearing my dude. Dad, I'm right here, man. What are you doing? <laughs> and I was so embarrassed. And Eric Karras, my first day in Montreal. I've never pitched in Montreal. I got there's 45,000 people when I'm there. I got like 38,000 in my family. <laughs> so, so you played for free. Or you basically, yeah, for, there it is. Yeah, yeah. pass list was actually they were free back then. So. Oh, they, okay. Back then it was. All right. Played way, way, way back when. I was like, oh yeah, oh, yeah. we pay for tickets. Oh now. yeah, yep. absolutely. <laughs> oh yeah, you got yeah. two. We need that on camera. We pay for tickets. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Don't ask us for tickets. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's like I went to Montreal and Karras was there. My dad had that shirt you talking about <laughs> and the blue awesome. goatee. And my jersey on, mm. right. a Dodger hat, and he, 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 he shaved the goatee. Oh, I'm like, he went for it. And my, I, 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 EK looked at me and goes, wow. <laughs> <laughs> 
And my dad's on the field signing <laughs> an autograph because he's in Montreal and he's like, he's the He's just Montreal. Montreal. living it up, <laughs> loving it. I'm sitting there, I'm like, that's my first trip in Montreal. I'm a rookie. I got Eric Harris looking at me like, you're going to get serious he well, out. He was well known in Montreal? My dad, yeah. <laughs> I, got two, I got two things for you. I got to know. Thank you. About the best at bat in baseball history that you were a part of. <laughs> in my history, for sure. In all of baseball history. history. Really? Yeah. I mean, that was, I, it's it was my, top. It's, it's, it's my favorite, me, yeah, and, it's at, my favorite at bat. I, I've watched it hundreds of times on YouTube. And like, That's crazy. Uh, tell me but it's crazy because it's the story behind it. I don't know. Yeah, so he's coming off of Cy Young. <laughs> I mean, you can tell it better. And Bonds is coming off of MVP. Yeah. And they match up in San Francisco. Yeah. And it's this but there's a whole story behind it because me and him, we went to Japan two and a half years before. And remember, he's getting walked. There's chickens everywhere in San Francisco. Yeah. Well, you know, nobody pitched him. Yeah. So he comes up to me, he goes, you know, it's me, Giambi, and a couple of guys. I was just sitting there in the clubhouse in, I think it was the Tokyo Dome. And we're sitting there all tired because it's 4.30 in the afternoon. It's like 5.30 our time. And we're sitting there and he goes, yeah, nobody faced me ever, man. Nobody else. Will. I'm like, Barry, are you kidding me? I'm in the game. It's a one run league. I'm never going to face you. You're the best in the world. In my opinion, is the best I ever stepped on the field. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm not gonna face you. He goes, come on, come on. Two and a half years later, I'm like, well, I will one day if I have like a three round lead or whatever. So that was the day. So was there a conversation about? Because I've I've heard things from different so people. We were in the clubhouse. Yeah. And Barry looked at me. He goes, Hey, are you ever gonna face me? I was like, I will, but it's got to be a certain situation. He goes, I get no change up. I'm like, no change up. Like, I, can I throw off? So he goes, yeah, uh, one off speed. I'm like, oh, it's a curveball. It's a 69 mile hour curveball. Wait, 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 wait. Bond says? Best. Yeah. Yeah, he goes, you can't throw change up. I'm like, <laughs> you can't throw change up? No. I'm like, really? Like the, like the best like, pitch in baseball during that era? You man, I said, all right, deal. I, I don't care, but, you know, but I got to throw off speed. He goes, no, only one. I'm like, yeah, you know it's going to be a curveball. So on the video before this at bat, like, you can just see it at the end. Pay very close attention when Bonds is walking around the hitter to get to the left-handed batter's box, you can see him. He looks out at the mound, right? And he like, like yeah. kind of like this. Like, like, it's like, on. It's oh, let's go, dude. <laughs> right? So like, so now we know it's on. <laughs> well, so first pitch is he's just, like 98 in. I get him off the outside. I was trying to open up the outside. Yeah. So he goes 98 <laughs> in, strike one. Yeah. And then it's like 98 in again. Yeah. Because right? I thought he was gonna look away, so I went in. So now he like. Now it's a, he's waiting for this. Right, of course. The whole time. I'm like, I'm not throwing for a strike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I'm like, I'm gonna go back door. So I'm like, yeah, he didn't break I mean, quite enough. He, on the on the on the video, when you watch the video, like it is like set up back door yeah. and it's just stuck. Just yeah. bah. And but it's it, bonds yeah. in his prime. The umpire's like, nope, ball. Right? <laughs> Ted, Williams. Like, Ted Williams. So I'm like, well, yeah. I got one off speed. I'm like, all right, there's my car, so I got nothing but heaters. I'm like, whoa, right. Not I can't believe he flinch. didn't, because I know he's sitting on curveball. No flip. I'm like, how do you not swing? He goes, no. I'm like, one, two. Yeah. So that was my car. I'm like, oh, I got him because it's so slow. It's 68, 69. Yeah. So I'm like, he's not going to swing. If he does, he's sitting on it. He's probably going to roll over because I went hard in. Yeah. So I'm okay. That's I, pretty he's safe. Foul it off or something. Yeah. Because, and then the next pitch, I go, fat. he doesn't swing. I'm like, uh. I go, I'm going hard in. He's, there's no way he goes slow. I go hard into his kneecap. Mm -hmm. He hits it. Then Mikovico, 550 feet. And no, no, there's a pitch barely. in between. There's a pitch in between. Up. There's a pitch up, and he fouls it like off straight back. Straight back, yeah. Then you, go the, then you go for the knee down yes. at 100. He's caught. And he hits it literally 500 feet, pulls it about 20 feet foul, but it just... just Ridiculous. <laughs> still going. Still going. But it was in his knee, and he went like this, and he, just, he kept it fair. It was barely foul. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Are you kidding me right now? But then no, no <laughs> off-speed pitch. So I'm like, done. In the... the uh, the, the reason I love the at bat is because it's just everything that's so good about baseball. It's just brass balls on Everybody's brass balls. Up. It's like, it's like, all right, man, you know what's coming. Like, we'll see who wins. Like, yep. man against yep. man in the peak of, you know. So and he, I did not win. So he. <laughs> <laughs> that was so he, one of your movies. <laughs> yeah. So he, he hits it into. He hits the one into McCovey Cove. The very next pitch is 100, and Bonds hits it like dead center, just a freaking missile. And I apologize to Alex Cora, which he was my second baseman, for almost killing him on the way up. Yeah, I mean, it was, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, I see you, man, I'm bad. Because it's seriously, yeah, the ball was off the ground, and I'm like, no way, and it just took off. Yeah. I'm like, and San Fran, I'm like, wow. <laughs> Dude, you gotta have some good, like, rookie hazing. Hazing, Jordan, yeah, I do, but it's like a reverse hazing almost. Because, <laughs> remember, I didn't speak much English, right. so I didn't take a lot of crap. 
Yep. I came in, I think, at best time in baseball. The end of old school and the new school. When, so I got year, a feel of when, both. When you kind of... I played, my first year was 98. Okay. In MLB, in big, in big leagues. Now with the social media, it's different. I mean, you got to... I know, don't you... I, I, I have to say, old school... I mean, everybody here is kind of old. I'm old, old school. Can't we get past hazing? Can't we like... That's why I don't like the hazing word. It's just like... Can't we just, like, you know, do you know, college beanies and bullshit? Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is the best time to talk about leadership and groups. Yeah. And like I, I, the, the biggest leader on our team with the A's is Matt Chapman. Mm-hmm. He's got two and a bit, like two and a half years in. And he's been the leader for almost two years. Lind- Lindor was the clubhouse leader in yeah. Cleveland like three months after he came up. Yeah. It, and how some, old was he? Like 21? May, yeah, maybe. So what happened is Jose Ramirez comes up the year before and... Uh, played a little bit, uh, played pretty well his first, you know, in like September. So the next year, Lindor goes back to the minor leagues and Jose is our starting shortstop. And so Lindor and um, Ramirez kind of came up through the minor league system together. And then they had this like competition with each other, not in a malicious way at all, but it was like they always try to one up each other. But that's a, that, that's the thing about a, like a bullpen. The best bullpens are competitive bullpens. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. That's, just, 100%. Like, that's also where, pictures. that's also where, as much as we love analytics, where character without a doubt is mm. the balancing, is 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 the complement. It's the glue. It's yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's especially prevalent with the guys who come up the mind lace together. They've been battling every single yeah. level. All you're trying to do is like, hey, okay, you did that. Watch this. Bam. Yeah. And then it just goes back and forth. You have the same thing with like a rotation. When I came up with the, as a starter, you're like, okay, this guy threw seven innings the night before. Well, here's eight. And you go out there and do that. Yeah. Well, that's like, I mean, you guys know bullpen games. That's what that's what they're all about. You just you sit down there for five or six innings, not doing anything, and you have all these like crazy little things. But mm-hmm. it's what brings people together. I love sitting in the bullpen. Like you get guys like I've got Joaquin Sorry right now, Yusmero Petit, Jake Deakman, guys who've been around for a while. Mm-hmm. Latroy Hawkins, I played with yeah. him. The guy played. For, that's yeah, a, you talk about the twenty-one Hawkins years. Yeah, I crazy. mean, same career path as I had as well. Like starter, not very good. And then move to the pen, and all of a sudden, oh, I'm, I'm, instead of throwing 90, I'm just going to try this mid 90 stuff. Yeah, that's a harder fun. Yeah, way more fun. But you sit in the throw harder, more these, control. Yeah, it's weird. Have this is the culture of the oh. bullpen. Yes, yeah. I love. I have a, the we have a, a script we're trying to <sighs> that's get it, that's, made about the bullpen. Yeah. Well, if you need oh, someone yeah. to be in, that's, it's, it's should be putting my hand up. Well, it's, <laughs> it's the, the bullpen. Beast. It's it's an American pitcher who kind of screws up his career because. He's got the wrong girlfriend, and he's got the bad rock group, and he just buys into the bullshit, mm-hmm. and he ends up in Colombia. <laughs> if you need, if you need someone right. to sit in the bullpen, I'm available. No, we need fifteen million dollars. We don't need. <laughs> yeah. Are up, you still available? <laughs> That's awesome. And he ends up in the bullpen for the Cartagena team. That's awesome. And he learns a new pitch. The splitter. The splitter. And I, so maybe you're my consultant. We give $5 a day, a day, a day oh, meal money. <laughs> $5 a day meal money. Straight split or fork? Uh, well, right I, now. I got a question. Speaking of splitter and forks. Elroy. Uh, I, I don't know the face difference. Exactly. exactly. A fork is like that. Isn't amazing? And split that, is more along the. That was isn't it amazing in baseball? Elroy no one face. knows the difference. Or it does. Yeah. But I, I, I have my own definition that I think I'm right. I'm always right. You yeah. Do. Oh, but as a, a French, all that's the French. But Canadian. it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. There's no women here, so we can be right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, as I, as I understand it, a, a split is just a split finger fastball. So he's like just just on the other side of the two seams, and a fork ball is like jamming the ball in deep. Mm-hmm. I don't know what. Like one of the Taiwanese guys I played with, literally slept with a softball. Mm-hmm. Oh, he put a softball in there and. Tape it and sleep I, with that. Yeah. I tried this. Hey. That's in our movie. That's in our script. Look at this scar. It is. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Oh wait. What you gonna? Oh, is, is that scar. from what it's from? It's from splitting it. I thought it would be what better. Do you know, I... you threw a splitter. <laughs> <laughs> it ripped. I'm like, oh my god, dude. Jeez. That was. That's when I got so, my little bit of baby TJ. Mm. Yeah. So I started throwing it two days ago. Throwing it in a game today. Oh, my biggest thing is like, I, I Googled the grip. You got short fingers, that'd be good. He Googled it. I, I Googled that's the grip. That's, that's, how I, that's how I got the grip. Everything's on Google, Google. and YouTube. Yeah, I know. Like I, was, I was searching for Kirby Yates' splitter, because obviously you see what he's been able to do yeah. with the last yeah. couple of years. And so literally, I couldn't find a photo of his. I was like, okay, what does Tanaka do? <laughs> Looked at Tanaka, I was like, that makes sense. So I just got a ball, curled this finger a little bit more, because I kept yeah. getting issues with my nail digging mm-hmm. into the skin. So I'm like, okay. 
That's why you need it. Did that way and then I'm wrapped around. And my fingers are all broken. I've broken these two fingers multiple times anyway. So it's just gripping around and threw it today and yeah. got a broken bat, ground ball. Still there's no, too. hey, there's no right and wrong split nah. or if I mean, hey, hey, it's just. If I get it out, I'll use, I'll throw it backwards. <laughs> uh, hey, trust me, I you throw your, your split, man. I never throw a split. <laughs> how, how, how did you throw the change up? What, like, hard, is it just slowly? A, as hard as How I, did you grip it, though? Do we have a baseball, folks? Like, I saw it because you've been working, that's, that's why, like, you've been working on the change up a lot. For like three years, I yeah. can't figure it out. It's not this, it's this. Yeah. Hmm. It's They're this one? one? The great change ups of all not, time. Come and show us, Eric. So it's forcing. Okay. Okay. I hold it and I go. It's the last three fingers. Oh, so you so you twist it. Yeah. And so there's like so this one's like torqued, like around it. It's a split with different fingers. Yeah. yeah. It's like the Vulcan. Yep. Let me see that. It's interesting though. <laughs> but it's at the tip of the fingers. Because the reason I started throwing the split was because I every pitch I throw, I throw as hard as I possibly can. Yeah. Right. That's so why I, I have no finesse in my game. So, it's, so no you twist it this way. This this finger was touching. What do you, show me your fastball first. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I throw it wrong. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How do you throw a fastball? Um, just like this. Because this seam kind of goes up and then my middle okay, finger is so longer. So I, let me see it on this side. Oh. You split or you touch oh, it? That's all right. You're good. Same. Right. Okay, so. Yeah. Sp change up. Okay, so I, I replay, I go right here. That's fast fastball. I replace this finger. I put it right here. Okay. Tip. Not yep. deep. Yep. Here. Okay. Just a minute, I'm gonna tape this. Oh, okay. See, I always so, get too bad with the flick. No, no, no. I always oh. use the flick. Show me again. Uh, please show me the whole thing. See, this is the this is the state of baseball right now. We just pull our phone out. We get all the secrets. We I got, know. We yeah, got four like, cameras here. No, it's not a secret. You can <laughs> hold it like this. You just can't release it. You don't know when to release it. Give it to Trevor, please. Trevor. All right. All right. So I'm supposed to. Okay. So four seam. So I'm going four seam, and then I replace. Mm -hmm. Those two it's there. It's still a four seam. It's a four yeah, seam yeah. fastball with different fingers. But then you, but then you torque it like so push you, with the thumb. Oh, opposite way, this way. Yep. So mm. towards the pinky. Yeah, but this still dominates. Okay, Interesting. So you push towards the pinky. Uh, okay. I see. It's a split. Yeah. And then it just rolls off. Does it? Yeah. And it finishes it, that one. That one is the last one to touch. That's it. Yeah. This one gets off. This one comes. Then this one. Is the right. last finger to touch is which? Interesting. Is the middle finger? Yeah. Is my, I, that was, the longest this finger. That was my chain. Was that way? But then I don't rotate. I'm not rotating. I'm pronouncing. Yeah. Pronating. All right. Straight through. Pronouncing my pronation. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> announcing my pronation. <laughs> with, with, a, <laughs> with authority. I know what I'm That's trying right. to say. It makes sense <laughs> in my head. Yeah. Announcing it with authority. <laughs> <laughs> You mentioned that like connecting back to the history and the traditions in baseball. So like, what are the what are the sacred ones for you, or what would you be willing to see like altered in the game? I think everything should be up for discussion. Yeah. Um, which isn't to say just because it's new it's better. Mm -hmm. But I mean, for instance, I embrace analytics. I also embrace certain old school instinct and intuition. And the balance of the two, I think, is the best. In other words, what, is, what analytics don't tell you is what's going on in the clubhouse. Mm -hmm. And that, that guy's girlfriend or wife just left. You know, the second baseman's wife just left for the center fielder. You know, analytics don't calculate mm -hmm. that. And the center fielder's on your team, and he's batting second, and you're batting third. They don't, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's stuff that a really good manager who respects analytics and respects human emotion and character yeah. can calibrate. Yeah. That's the part that's like directing movies to me. Yeah. Uh, baseball, baseball is like a, each game is like a story. There's some drama, there's yeah. a beginning, there's a middle. And the, like, and the fans and the press don't know what everybody in the locker room, which is players, coaches. Mm -hmm. I tended to get along with players and coaches. You know, I mean, there, there's fights and this and that, but you know, we're all pulling the same direction. Yep. Uh, so I like the idea of, of embracing the new and respecting the old. Yeah. Uh, I like, you know, would I speed the game up? That's the big question. Well, let me ask, I got three pitchers here, three major league star pitchers. How many warm up pitches before each inning if you're a starter? So I take, I do my crow hop, two fastballs, Change up, cutter, slider, curveball, fastball. What do you do to crawl up? Eight? It's just in your head, you feel like you've done everything. Nine, eight or nine? Eight. 
Eight? Yeah. And yeah. You, it's what always eight. It's always because okay. we're I think we're that's, how, that's how we came up. Yeah. Here's, my question. Here's my question. Why yeah. can't, why does it have to take two plus minutes between innings? Yeah. If suddenly everybody adjusted, maybe six pitches is enough for you. What's the least amount of pitches you've ever thrown to get into a game? One? I had four. Seven game in a row. Oh, yeah, you already lose that. Uh, I had four, and I thought it was an in injury Montreal. delay. You thought what? I had, I had four pitches in the bullpen. The catcher got down for one, but I had ran, and then I ran into a game in L.A. last year. Didn't realize. I thought it was an injury delay. So, <laughs> taking my time, and they're like, hey, you got one more. I'm like, what? And how did you yeah. throw? I, I think I gave up a hit, but I um, came in in the eighth inning with a guy on and got out of that. You got out of there. Bri- we talk about Brian Shaw is notorious for this. So Brian Shaw in Cleveland would be sitting down in the bullpen with an iPad out with like fantasy football stats or, like <laughs> or football games or whatever on his iPad. He's got his phone, he's playing Clash Royale, which is, has a two minute, it's a two minute game time, right? Oh yeah. So he's sitting there, he starts a new game, the bullpen phone rings and he, the, JB, our, our bullpen coach is like, hey Brian, you got the next hitter, right? It's OO count. He's like, all right. He's sitting there, he's playing his game. <laughs> Ball one, playing his game. Ball two, playing the game. JB's like, Brian, you heard me, right? You got the next hitter. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> so he finishes up his game, it's 3-0. Throws one ball off the mound, ball four. So they call down, like, is Shaw ready? So JB's like, Shaw, you ready? And he's like, yep, I'm good. So he says, I'm good. So he rifles off two more pitches as Francona's going out to the mound. Mm-hmm. I think he gets four total pitches in the pen. Runs out to the mound, throws six warm-up pitches. All right, I'm good. First pitch, 97 yanked. Like, I mean, the guy's on base, catcher's like diving to stop the ball, right? <laughs> yank. Second pitch, yank. Nowhere close. Third pitch, yank. And we're like, what is going on? <laughs> right? So now, so that's his 13th total throw. And then the next three are 97, just like dotted away, strikes the guy out and goes, I guess he needs more than four. He needs seven. Well, he, needs seven. <laughs> he needs seven. He needs seven. Yeah. So he needs but, seven. Oh. So. But the crazy thing is I was in Boston as a Ranger, and I think we had an injury. I can't remember exactly, but they're like, hey, call me in. You warm up on the mound. I'm like, I'm not warm up on the mound. That's the hardest I'm thing I'm not. To do. I didn't do it. I got booed for seven minutes in Boston as a Ranger. I'm like, I'm not going out on the mound. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to hurry up. Yeah. So I warmed up in the bullpen there. I'm getting booed. The umpire yelling. I'm like, there's no rules. I said, I have to go warm up there. Yeah. I can you, can you warm up? Oh, injury delay? Yeah. So can we had, you start? No one can tell me to go on the mound now because it's Can a you delay. loosen up in the pen if you haven't been called or does that cause the pitching coaches to go nuts? Can you just say, I think I'm... No, we had... Um, so I played with a guy, Mark Zepchinski. Uh, he would get a... Zep. I love that. <laughs> Loves that. He was one of my closest Who friends. Mark Zepchinski. Yeah. He would throw... A, he'd get up there and he'd throw a heavy ball at every time. In the fifth inning, he'd get up there, throw his heavy ball, throw a couple with a light ball, and then that, that's what he did. That was his every day. The first couple times, the manager, like, the pitching coach was like, what's he doing? The next couple times, were like, nowadays it's different. Like, I, I, if I haven't thrown in five days, I can throw a little touch and feel at the end of the game. Now they have to get permission for me to throw. There's been a couple of times where I've just gotten up, thrown, and then they've gotten permission. Better ask for forgiveness than permission. But yeah, like he's the only one that I've ever known that's got an old man without telling anybody. If I'm a starter and I look out to the pen and I see someone yes. on the mound, I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. I get- <laughs> what do they think? What do they think? There's a doubt. I'm like, well, what am I? Yeah. Why occasionally yeah. throw the ball over the center field field? In case <laughs> the manager comes out and it might happen. You know, I mean, it could happen. It wasn't loose. <laughs> I think that's a good place to wrap it up. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you guys for coming. This has been great. Oh, it's been great.